away from the coast as they can is like there isn't a timetable there's an event timetable but the president has been trying to announce it since last September so uh, first they tried with the emergency broadcast system that didn't work and then believe it or not I mean you know you think if you're president you can just announce whatever the hell you want and no you can't because there are people the elite and the rich and the powerful don't want you to stop going to your job I mean if they announced the, tr the whole truth, do you think anyone would show up for their job? Or, now, I live on a mountaintop in the middle of the Maine coast because Maine was held down by glaciers, and once and it's slowly rising. So once the crust comes free of the core, it's just going to pop up another 500 feet. So I'll be doing fine with a 600-foot tidal wave. But um, Florida, that's actually going to sink. The U.K., that's going to sink. Japan is going to sink. So... A lot of places, it isn't just a matter of a 600-foot tidal wave. And then, of course, all the ice in the whole world is in the wrong place, so that's going to melt. So the, the Zeta say the final sea level is going to be 700 feet above present. So the president isn't going to say what's going to happen. He's going he's to say um, there's a planet in between the Earth and the sun, um, but, uh, you know, that he would turn it over to NASA, which would say, yes, there's a rogue planet, but we were prohibited by national security. But don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. If anything's going to happen, we'll tell you. And then maybe they turn it over to NOAA, which is saying, well, this huge earth wobble is what's causing all this weather. They're never going to admit that global warming and climate change were a lie because can you imagine the lawsuits? It would bring the whole world to a halt because how many hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent on uh, getting, reducing car fossil fuels? And, you know, the thing is, is Planet X is roiling the magma. So the magma is circulating closer to the bottom of the crust. So the seafloors are warming and the ice is melting from underneath. But the actual truth is, the Arctic just had one of the coldest winters in years, and the amount of ice that formed this winter in the Arctic is unbelievable. Antarctica has been gaining ice. The top of the Himalayas and a lot of these glaciers are gaining ice. So this whole global warming thing, they're never going to use that phrase again. They would rather die than say global warming. So, um, you know, I don't know how he's going to put it, but my opinion is um, he's got to announce it. And meanwhile, the government is doing all these strange things like ordering 1.2 billion rounds of hollow point ammunition. They're going to arm these uh, Social Security um, uh, employees and the National Weather Service employees are all going to be packing with hollow point bullets. I mean, come on. Who, who, who thinks, um, you know, that that's normal? What are they expecting? And, you know, of course there's going to be some people – who are going to uh, uh, riot and, and uh, steal and loot, be out of control. But yet, if they do announce it, then people will go, well, this is something that we're all facing together. Let's work together to save as many people as possible. But they've got to do it sooner than later. Now, I live on a mountaintop. I heat with wood. I've got an outhouse. I'm ready for no electricity and no fuel. Um, you know, I live in a forest. I've got wood all around me. So, you know, my theory is if you're ready for pole shift today, then you're going to be ready for it whenever else you can. But if you, if you notice, around the world, the economy has not been getting better, regardless of what they're saying. And people are realizing every day that everything they've worked for all their lives is coming to naught. And hopefully people will say, well, really, what is important? And they'll realize, you know, you, every time you see a disaster, you see people say, well, I lost everything, but, you know, at least we all survived. And, you know, that's what's important. And people are going to start realizing, well, maybe people are more important than possession. See, that's the thing. There isn't a timetable. And that's, that's the number one question everyone asks. Well, when is this going to happen? But the thing is, is it could happen at any time. The only country that's taken any provision is China, which has built these ghost cities because um, and remember I had said that the uh, southeastern uh, China plate was going to be sinking. Well, Jakarta, Indonesia, parts of it are 85 feet below sea level. Um, that, that sinking is, is almost 70% uh, complete in that tip of the Southeast Asian plate. But all the other um, the earth changes have stopped. And I was, I was talking to Nancy on the phone. I, I said, you know, that I heard 
that, that these metal boxes were found on the beaches in Oregon and they were vibrating. And I said, I think there's extraterrestrial devices. But it is true. On all the faults of the earth, there are th tens of thousands of these boxes vibrating. And what they're doing is instead of letting the, the movement of the plates, because the roiling of the magma deep in the core of the earth is causing these quakes and these other shifts, the north end of South America is going to move to the west. The north end of Africa is going to move to the east. The Atlantic is going to get wider. The Pacific is going to get narrower. So there's all these things. And uh, so anyway, these metal boxes have put that off. And the reason why is because they want to have the massive social change. And you can imagine if the president does announce it, of course there's going to be massive social change. So Planet X is not going anywhere. It's sitting there. And... The, the clump of four planets, the dark twin, Venus, the Earth, and, the, and planet X are still rotating around the sun, but, but they're not moving in relation to each other. And the tail is stretched towards the Earth, so that rock that came down over Russia and the other ones that were seen over San Francisco and Cuba and Japan are all from the tail of planet rocks, and there's trillions of them. So this is going to be a big disaster. So when the president announces it, um, you know, and I mean, I, I'm not sitting in his office I'm privy to whatever they're deciding, but I can tell you this. Um, they really don't want people to, to he, he's not going to use the word Planet X. He's going to say, look, um, Reagan signed an executive order making it top secret. Every president signed on, but I'm such a humanitarian that I'm telling you that there has been a planet between the Earth and the Sun for nine years. And, uh, and, and, and why not? I mean, if it separates from the sun where every single person on Earth looks up and goes, oh, my God, what's that? And the glowing area, the thing that's at the 5 o'clock position is the tail, which is sort of transparent, translucent, whatever you want to say, because it's a cloud of dust or red iron oxide dust. It's lit by the sun, and you can see that from Earth. So that, that's what people are taking pictures of, is the tail of planet X stretching towards the Earth. And you can't see Planet X itself, but at one of these days, when it gets far enough from the sun, you are going to see it. that the Council of Worlds has told the president, you've got to announce it. So you can speculate that the first thing he would say is Ronald Reagan had an executive order that this is top secret, and every other president signed on, but now I'm going to be the one who's uh, breaking that because everybody has to announce that. How can he not announce it? Because Planet X pulls the magnetic bar of the Great Atlantic Rift down towards it, and then as the Earth continues to shift and the Atlantic no longer faces the sun, then the North Pole, which doesn't like the North Pole of Planet X, um, pushes the Earth, the North Pole of the Earth back. So you get these wobbles, and what you get is this gigantic loops in the jet stream. So normally the jet stream moves from west to east, but now if you notice these weather maps, you know, and and why wouldn't you with all these big storms? So everybody's more interested in the weather than ever because it's really can be life or death. And what you get is these giant arcs of cold air coming down from the Arctic. And 30 miles to the east, you've got this giant arc of tropical air coming up from the Caribbean. Um, and you've got this clash of fronts that makes these gigantic storms. I mean, look at Hurricane Sandy. And... You know, if the government told the truth, they should say nobody should rebuild anywhere. But it's just like Katrina and New Orleans. People are saying, well, you know, we, we're going to bring it back, and it's going to be so meaningful, and we're going to have uh, Seaside Heights, New Jersey, ready for the tourist season. And, you know, but the truth is nobody should be there now at all because this is right in the danger zone. They, you know, they should be saying, well, we're going to move anyone that wants to go from the coast. And that's the interesting thing. The Zetas have said even when this is announced, probably only as much as 60%, but no more than that, are going to go, oh, my God, we've got to, to go to safety. And the rest are going to go, well, you know, I really don't want to change anything, so I'm going to keep going to work. And if the tidal wave uh, washes over me, then, then that's it. You know, I'll just die. Well, you know, okay, you're that's what this life is like. You're entitled to be a skeptic. You're entitled to be in denial, and you're entitled to die in it, but there's no reason for you to. 
do that. So the binary star is uh, quite a distance away. Uh, that's why it takes 3,657 years for Planet X to return. So it's something we've never seen because it's burned out, but it is a huge body, and that's where it started. And evidently, Planet X has been coming here at least 2 billion years. So, um, you know, it, it wasn't that the Anunnaki were always there. They reached a point where they decided they wanted to powder the gold and put it in their atmosphere to keep the planet a little bit warmer. It's got giant um, hot magma in its core, and it's got water, which has the highest specific heat of any substance in the universe, so it holds heat. It takes longer to heat water than anything in the universe, and it, and, heat, and water holds heat longer than any. So, But they were getting cold, so they, that's, what, that's where the whole quest for gold came from. That Phobos is a spaceship because it's, it's a hollowed out, and it's got chambers in it because they use ground-penetrating radar, but actually the, uh, Phobos is one giant gold nugget and the Anunnaki since they came back have been mining. look at go do a search in Wyoming Dick Cheney tried to get the Wyoming legislature and he only failed by a few votes to buy a used aircraft carrier now would Wyoming Edgar Casey said that Omaha was going to be the greatest seaport in North America after pole shift and uh, you know, evidently he's planning that the Mississippi will split wider, salt water will go up to the Great Lakes, and then uh, up the uh, Missouri and the Platte Rivers, and then maybe the Red River. And I guess they were planning to, uh, you know, keep it, um, I don't know, in the Great Lakes or in uh, the Gulf and then float it right up to Wyoming. But you can see why he would want that. It's got nuclear power. It's got a hospital that holds 5,000 people, and he could load it with uh strike uh, fighter strike jets, you know, and be king of the world. And you look at the billionaires around the Earth, they're, they're trying to uh, start their own space program. So nobody's going to leave Earth and come back as kings of the Earth afterwards. No, they're all going to have to go through it. And whether you're a billionaire or not, you're going to have to roll up your sleeves. So, the, you know, this, you've heard of the idea of these deep underground bunkers everybody was going to head. But, um, you know, how how well are they going to survive in 10-plus in power earthquakes? So they're not. And But then, you know, after pole shift, at the, mo at the hour of pole shift, when the tidal waves start, then everyone's going to, after that, there won't be any earthquakes, so people are going to want to be underground because how are you going to survive? People are going to want to be underground because how are you going to survive? There are increasing indications that Planet X, also known as Nibiru, is moving in a precise direction towards planet Earth. So what does this suggest for those of us who dwell on this planet? Is there actually a biblical link that correlates with the end times as we know it? Many of you believe that NASA and other government bodies, such as the Pentagon and the CIA, are aware of its approach. Your belief carries considerable weight, considering the recent publication of scientific studies claiming that there is proof of an unnamed mysterious planet lurking beyond Pluto. The claim was determined by observations of gravitational influences on a group of celestial bodies called the extreme trans-Neptunian objects, which are orbiting our Sun beyond Neptune. The approach of the mysterious planet Nibiru is at present sending waves of charged plasmatic energy particles through our solar system. The flow of energy will finally affect the core flows of the Earth and result in catastrophic changes in Earth's climate, which is without a doubt occurring on an escalated scale. Planet Earth has been feeling the effects of this inbound planet or system of planets since 1996 with records showing a troublesome increase in seismic and volcanic activity, extreme weather patterns, and catastrophic disasters. U.S. and Russian governments are aware of its approach, as is the Vatican hierarchy, which is keeping a watchful eye on the heavens, 
with their sophisticated telescope perched high in the mountains of Arizona. In the meantime, the public is being kept in the dark regarding this approaching apocalypse. The consensus by many is that such an event would annihilate two-thirds of the world's population, while two-thirds of those who survived the initial impact will perish over time due to starvation and exposure to the elements. The question that persists with respect to Planet X is whether this mysterious planet that scientists now claim exists beyond Pluto is the same planet that is believed to have wiped out much of humanity thousands of years ago. There is, however, more to the story than what meets the eye. Based on the research study known as Extreme Trans-Neptunian Objects and the Kazai Mechanism, signaling the uh, presence of trans-Plutonian planets, posted in 2014 in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society Letters, there are at least two planets, part of our solar system, larger than Earth, lurking out there beyond Pluto, and whose existence can be noticed through their gravitational influences. So it is fair to say that NASA understands that these planetary objects are a serious threat to our civilization. It is widely perceived that researchers had proposed that the so-called Planet X was at least 10 times as large as Earth and was most likely situated at a distance of 250 astronomical units from our Sun with an orbit of 10 to 20,000 years. There is an understanding that an approaching large body or a star system of planets and moons can trigger considerable differences in magnetic activity and recent data from our magnetosphere indicates that this is what is now taking place. There were even suggestions that Google Sky had revealed an area in space that had been censored by NASA, showing the winged globe moving through our solar system. So are these subtle warnings an earnest attempt to inform us that an apocalyptic situation is at hand, which is coming from out of this world, something previously unknown to humanity? but which have memories in our subconscious from past lives and records kept over the ages? If we consider the ancient era of Atlantis and Lemuria and what happened to these civilizations, is it any wonder that NASA would redact the location of this incoming body on Google Sky or in their own imagery? Every week, NASA appears to have learned something new that was unimaginable, and yet they want us to imagine that Planet X Nibiru is unreal. As you can envision, the gravitational consequences of a sizable planet moving close to the inner solar system would spell huge problems for planet Earth. Not only are we witnessing climate extremes and a shifting of the Earth, but we are now bearing witness to the very real observations that the four seasons as we have known them are now blending. So with all of this in mind, we can now ascertain why certain governments are taking steps to protect their own interests as they prepare for the arrival and the aftermath of this large planetary body or system of planets moving through our solar system. Here is some news that has been widely reported, but which some of you may not be aware of. Russia recently completed building or updating some 5,000 shelters in Moscow. They actually have been quite open about what they are doing, but they haven't specifically stated the actual reason for constructing or updating these shelters. But we do know that they have some facilities that can accommodate up to 100,000 people. 
The United States is estimated to have over 150 deep underground military bases. Coincidentally, a huge military underground city exists below the Denver airport. Now, these are entire underground cities that have been under construction since the 1980s. But this is a need-to-know classification that is underway and is never published in advance for fear of destabilizing the economy. If you do any research of this topic, you are bound to run into various forms of disinformation. Now, some of it intentional, but much of it produced by uneducated individuals within the public. Until the discovery of Planet X, astronomers had regarded the writings of the ancient Sumerians about this object as legend. When Planet X was discovered in 1983, they suddenly learned that the Sumerians were not the primitive people they had been made out to be by intellectuals of today. Have you ever wondered what the real purpose of the Hubble Space Telescope was intended for? It was not to explore the universe and the solar system, as some have suggested. Rather, the reason for constructing this multi-billion dollar telescope and then placing it in orbit was for the purpose of observing the inbound Planet X. A June 6th interview with a Hubble insider states this fact as to the Hubble's purpose. He watched this mysterious body through the Hubble telescope and stated that this thing looked as if it was nearby and the Hubble got cut off, and they encrypted it, and that was the end of any transmission. So let's listen to this interview. Back in the 1950s, most people aren't aware of it, but there was a scientific storm in America all through the late 50s about this thing out there in space because the astronomers were all watching it, and that was back when they weren't afraid to talk about it. It was in the science magazines. I mean, I had a subscription to, like, Popular Science and Hell. It was on the front cover of the magazine one day in, like, 1961. And uh, I was really excited when I saw it because here's this giant red planet on the horizon uh, of the California coast and a humongous tidal wave coming in towards the coast and having grew up in the mountains of uh, the Sierras and this thing in the magazine it said this tidal wave coming in was going to be at least three miles high and I went and showed it to everybody in the house and they laughed and they said look it says right here there's nothing to worry about it won't be here for another 50 years. Hey, guess what? That 50 years has came and gone, and uh, this baby's out there in the sky. They've been watching it. I watched it, and I can tell you, this thing has got so much trash coming around it. You know how we live in a solar system? We've got nine planets and a big sun. This right. thing has got seven planets and its own sun. The years as it went by and we watched it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally, about 08, we could see this thing like it was across the street. And we could see that it was a blazing hot ball of fire giving out sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles in every direction. And you could see the planets circulating it. Now, I'll tell you one thing that I really am nervous about. I think this thing's got a planet like ours circling it. This is its own solar system. We're about to have a solar system come through the middle of our solar system. This can't be good. But unfortunately, it looks as though that's what's going to happen. We were looking at asteroids right close to this thing. There's asteroids that are floating around right near the, uh, that are orbiting the, uh, the main sun itself. These things appear to be about 500 miles across. This thing looks like a giant red teardrop shaped dust cloud and you can see once if you if you're able to see it up close like we did you can see every speck out there now these cia people that i know say that we're not going to uh, uh be that close to it when it goes past us they're saying that in order to attain breakaway speed when it comes up around the back side of the sun its speed will at least double possibly more which will put it here earlier than everybody is saying it will, and uh, that this thing will probably be about 20, mi 20 million miles from us when, when it crosses in front of us, 
and then as soon as it flips us upside down, we're going to go into its debris field. These CIA guys told me that this pole shift will probably happen from start to finish in around 28 minutes. That doesn't give you a lot of warning. When you see that thing out there in the sky, you're going to have to run as fast as you can to your underground facility because this is going to happen so fast. Now, see, here's another thing nobody's talking about. You've got this giant iron planet that they say is 47,000 miles across, getting ready to come up past us. And when well, it starts is, to approach us, is, it's going to start and have real serious effects. So is it a and planet or a failed star? It's not a failed star. It, it, you know, I saw this thing up close. It did not look like a failed star. It looked just like our sun. Right. Okay. It, the, would you call our sun a failed star? No. Okay. Well, you had said planet. I wasn't sure if it was like a, a failed star brown dwarf or a full sun. So it's a full sun? It's a, it, it looks to me like a miniature sun, just like the one we have. The only difference is, see, is our sun is uh, giving off flames and stuff, and this one's doing the same thing as it, but it's giving off this red iron oxide cloud of dust around it, and until it got close, we couldn't even tell what was in there. We knew we could see it was hot, and it looked like it was just a dull red when we were first able to discern it through the red cloud. But as it approached, it started to become more apparent that this thing is just orange hot, right. and uh, it's got this enormous, and I mean enormous, the, at least 50 or 100,000 miles on each side of it, this red dust cloud that goes all the way around it. I know when we were watching it, as it started to make the upward swing to approach behind our sun, it was amazing. The red dust cloud settled down, instead of being around, it started to settle down into a V, like wings, upside down wings. Right. And I thought, boy, I wonder if that's where the ancient Sumerians got the idea this thing had wings, because, you know, centrifugal force is a funny thing. When it yeah. comes back up around the planet, when we see it in the sky, my guess is it's going to look like it's got wings because centrifugal force is going to be pulling the uh, red iron oxide dust and particles uh, uh, out to one side. This thing's going to look like a big red dragon, exactly like all the ancient Sumerians and the Chinese and all the rest of them that had documented this thing's passing before. Uh, it didn't look like a white ball or a snow cloud or nothing. It looked like a big red iron oxide dust cloud with a superheated star in the middle of it. And I mean, you know, and that's what we've seen. Uh, so, you know, I don't care what anybody else says. There's a possibility. There's more than one thing out there. You know, I watched it through the Hubble Space Telescope. And when this thing looked like it was uh, across the street, uh, the Hubble got cut off and they encrypted it, and that was the end of any transmissions we had to watch. And uh, and we know that the Hubble, in order to be in the shadow of the Earth, had to be at an angle, and so that meant it was looking downward, uh, right. and this thing was coming up underneath of us. And uh, uh, I tell you the honest God truth, I personally think this thing is real close to us right now, but, you know, that's just my general feeling that, uh, you know, and I'm a pretty psychic guy. Uh, I have the feeling that this thing is right close by and that we're going to see it any time. Okay, because, listen, they've known about this thing forever, and I mean they've known about it forever. I mean, if, if I read about it in a science magazine in 1961, that tells you that, I mean, it's only 1,800 years away. How could they not be able to see it when it came around the backside of the last sun and headed this way? Right, right. You have to know they've been watching it because if you, you know, Carl Sagan was showing stuff that they took with their old telescopes that was billions and billions of, of miles away, and this thing's only 1,800 years away. Well, and by 1930, it was only 70 years away. You know, we do estimate that this thing, let me give you a thing. Maybe you can figure out your own timeline. We estimated that this thing is traveling around 3,500 miles an hour, okay? Okay. That was our estimate of its speed. Now, it has been picking up speed, and that's the reason why we think it's going to arrive early because... When it comes around the backside of the sun, it's got to double that speed in order to attain breakaway speed to leave the sun and not wind up orbiting it. It's never orbited the sun in the past that we know of, so that means that it's going to have to attain breakaway speed to head back out into space. Now, you look at the NASA videos, photos, and all this other crap those morons put on the Internet, 
this thing is coming in. It's going to, as soon as it goes around the top of the sun, it's going to go back out into space. Right. And it's going to do this really fast. When it goes past us, it's going to go past us so fast that we'll almost have no time to get ready. That's my opinion. But, you know, just drawing it out on paper a few times and thinking about it, and I went, you know, if this thing picks up enough speed to make breakaway speed, then that means it's going to come past us. You know, this thing, according to uh, what I was told, is that this thing is approximately 47,000 miles in diameter, uh, you know, four or five times the size of the Earth, and it'll come past us, and we won't have a lot of warning, and we won't get to see it in the sky until it's on us. Now, I was told that the poles are not shifting at 42 miles a year. They're shifting at 42 miles a day. And the reason is is because this planet is rolling over to face this thing. Now, when it goes by, it's not going to push our north pole away. It's going to grab our southern pole with its northern pole, and it's going to be like somebody kicked this planet in the ass. That earthquake that it talks about in uh, Revelations, uh, when the opening of the sixth seal comes, from what I've been told, that's very accurate because that's exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be a massive earthquake when it locks onto us as it goes past mm -hmm. us. It's that the nemesis system is rising to the ecliptic, as I mentioned in the video which I published on October 28th. So something is definitely taking place now, and it behooves us to start paying careful attention to the skies. 
So if any of our viewers and subscribers have anything uh, of value, any type of information or images you care to share with us, please forward them over here for review um, as soon as you can.